this is Chad from Zombie Fight Shark. Welcome to the Thor exploration series. We're going to go through every single knob and button and switch and control and setting that Thor has. And uh, hopefully by the time it's all over with, you're going to have a very deep understanding of what Thor is and what it can do. It's going to, there's going to be multiple videos in this series. Um, there, it's been said by some of the reason OGs um, that you really didn't need any more instruments after Thor because it's so powerful. The routing on it is so powerful and you can do so much. Um, and um, Pef, um, who if you don't know who he is, um, he's, he's been around a long time in the reason community. Uh, he created the buffer beat repeater. And uh, there, if you, you look around on the web, you can find something that he created as a precursor to this that is very similar and was all done using Reason uh, native devices. Uh, Beat Repeater is a little bit easier to use and is a little more powerful in terms of uh, how quickly and easily you can you can do things with it. But uh, I think it was him who said that you, you really didn't need a lot of the REs, uh, the rack extensions, because... Um, Thor could almost using Thor and other routing devices, you could make almost anything you could possibly think of. Um, I think we might might have moved beyond that. Um, that was when Ari's uh, rack extensions first came out. That that I believe he said that. But um, you know, it one way or the other, Thor is incredible. Um, so I I think by the time we're done with this you're you're going to be blown away with all the things that it can do and um it is hands down one of the best synthesizers out there um and once you understand how to use it how to unlock its power then you really can start to do incredible stuff with it um not even not not even talking about combining it with other things i'm just talking about using it in reason so um enough of me talking Let's get into it, and we're going to just talk about this section. What do you see? What can you do with just this little part right here? And, and what are all these knobs and buttons for? So here we go. A lot of this you should know. So pitch bend wheel. I think we all know that one. And uh, this is the range button for the pitch bend. So... So if you want a really significant pitch bend or a really mild one, that's what that's for. The mod wheel, which at the moment isn't programmed for anything, but we'll go in depth in how powerful it is. Um, polyphony, not too complicated. Number of notes that can be played at one time. So uh, if I change this to one, no matter what I do, I can only hear one note. Um, so now, change it to two. I'm playing a three note chord, but you can only hear two of the notes at a time. And then, you know, go to 32, and then we can hear everything um, for all 32 of your fingers. So, release polyphony is a little bit more confusing. Um, it's uh, one of those things that had to be demonstrated to me um, to, to make sense. So you, so you can hear the release of these notes. I just changed that to a really long release. So, right, so super long release polyphony there. All of the notes I just played continue to ring out. So we're going to change the release polyphony down to one. And you can see it ring. It's just, it's actually allowing two. Now it's only allowing one. One at a time. So now. So you can kind of hear that, hear it building. So if you are creating a patch or you're playing something and your, your notes start to sound weird or you're like, the tail is sounding strange to your notes. It check your release poly polyphony because it's one of those things that um, it's easy to forget about, but um, it can kind of mess up your whole vibe if it's set wrong. So um, 
mono legato. So you don't have to mess with the polyphony here if you are if you want it to be uh, you want your instrument to be mono. You can just hit that little button, or you can use the mode button if you prefer. <clears throat> so legato mode means it's gonna slip slide between the notes. We don't have portamento turned on, so this just changes the note. Retrigger is going to give you the attack on every one of them. So, uh, in, um, you can't see my hands, but... So there, I'm holding down one note and I'm going between them. Now, if I do retrigger, I'm still going to do them do the same thing. So you hear the attack on every single one of them, um, and this leads into our good friend Portamento. So it was off there. Let's turn it on. We're going to be on mono legato, and we're going to get a little bit of a little slip slide in between the notes. And so the lower this is, the you know high slip sliding. So it takes a long time. other side of the coin where it's so fast you can almost not even hear it that there is portamento so the default the default that it is when it opens up 40 so that's a little bit slippery or more slippery than than I like but um, I think it works and then we have off on auto so off, I think we know what it does. It turns your portamento off. On, everything has portamento. Whether you're polyphonic or monophonic, everything's going to have portamento. And it's going to, you're going to hear it at the beginning of every attack. It's always going to slide. So you can hear that slide at the beginning of every attack. Auto. Only if you're holding two notes, or if you're doing multiple notes. So, versus, it's although it's actually, you're still hearing, hearing portamento, so the chord example doesn't work. Um, so there you go. Um, you don't get it at the beginning of the attack <clears throat> when it's set to auto. All right, so trigger right here. We got MIDI and we got step sequencer. This really isn't one that almost isn't even necessary, but um, sometimes you might use Thor as an effects unit. Um, and if you want to make sure that um, you're not accidentally going to trigger a note, then you can turn it off here. And the step sequencer trigger, that refers to this step sequencer down here. Um, so it's just a way to control what is going in and out of the unit. Um, I'll be honest, I think I've turned it on and off a total of like one time, uh, but there it is, they have it for us. Um, the rotary, these programmable rotary knobs and programmable buttons, um, pretty awesome. And your up and down here, uh, is uh, those are key switches. So you can set it to turn it on and off. Uh, let's see if we can do something real quick and demonstrate that. All right, so <clears throat> I've made a simple patch here that um, all I've done is assign button number one to the shaper, and then I've, I've bumped it up to 100 uh, so it'll max out whatever uh, cl uh, clipping I have assigned. So uh, here we go. So there's my sound. And you'll notice, like, it's not clipping any, because um, I've got my drive set to zero. And so when I click the button, it'll set it to 100. All right, simple enough. Now, what is this button? This, this you can assign a note to activate that. So, see, button's off. Now, I'm going to hit C, negative 2, C minus 2. So if you have an effect that you want to assign to a specific, to be able to trigger that effect, 
then that's that's the way to do it. And you can assign it to either one of these. Um, so you could have multiple effects. You could toggle between them. Um, just one of those little subtle things that Thor can do that is sort of amazing. Um, just there's so many. This thing is so packed full of features. Um, so uh, I think everybody who uses Reason understands how to load patches. Um, so that's what this is. Load your patches. Open a patch. Um, and uh, and then save your patch. So um, you'll get that pop up there. Um, so yeah, that's that's that. And then finally, last but not least, master volume. I think we know how to use volume. I hope so anyway. This volume goes to 11. It's one louder. Um, so that's it. That's it for our introduction. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, in uh, part two. We're going to start talking about oscillator routing. And then part three, we'll actually start going into the oscillators themselves and explaining what's happening when you're uh, toggling through them in message settings. Thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe. You know how all that stuff goes. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.